Good morning, everybody. It's Gettysburg 159. I don't want to interfere with the officer's commands, but we are witnessing battalion drill of the 1st Minnesota here at the uh, second day of the anniversary of Gettysburg. They're going to be doing their famous charge later, but for now, let's just enjoy the battalion drill. Chris White will have some things to say from behind the camera. So good morning, everybody. Chris White with the American Battlefield Trust, and uh, we're taking a look at uh, the Liberty Rifles who are doing battalion drill out here at Gettysburg. Right now, what they're doing is uh, pulling off of their gun line that you see here. These are their stacks of arms. They're going to do their drill without arms right now. Um, the idea is to take a little bit easier on these reenactors and so you don't wear them out for the weekend. But they are portraying the first Minnesota, uh, and what they're uh, now doing is getting their columns in order and their company formations, which you can see here, um, are all getting into order and they're gonna start their battalion drill out here near Meade's headquarters on Cemetery Ridge. Let me mention, the portrayal is done by the Liberty Rifles. who pride themselves in trying to be accurate and let us know what you think. I know there's a lot of reenactors out there watching. Let us know how you think they're doing. So as they're marching along here, everybody's going to be over onto the left-hand side because that's where their colors are. This will be called guiding left. Um, so everyone's going to try to guide to that point. Now the head of the column is turning down to the right. Each one of the companies will start to do a right wheel, and that will keep them into their columns. The important part of this is to keep their intervals between the two companies, um, their spacing, because whenever they go back into a battle line, they want to make sure that they can snap back into battle line quickly and not all bunch up. Uh, looking like a traffic jam. So they're all going to try to keep their intervals together going as they march across the field, which is much harder than it looks. You might notice that the colors are furled right now. Whenever the uh, soldiers are marching to and from battle, most of the time the colors will be shucked, as they called it. They'll be actually um, covered up because those flags, those battle flags, are very large. They're tough to, uh, <laughs> to control in the wind, and that'll tire out your color sergeant as he's marching along. So right now the colors are furled, make it a little bit easier on the guys to march around. Some of the guys you might notice aren't wearing coats. They're taking... Um, taking it easier on the reenactors. Some of the guys are in still full kit. Others have uh, dressed down because it's pretty humid here and it's already peaking up towards the 80s here at Gettysburg this morning. So the Colonel who is uh, out near that tree um, is giving the orders and the uh, head of the column is turning to the right so he was having the first company start to wheel. That is taking the um, company towards Cemetery Ridge or the crest of Cemetery Ridge. And each successive company will do a right half wheel as they start to swing in that direction. You'll see the captains or the lieutenants who's in charge of the company, depending on what rank they are, trying to get everyone wheeled over. You might notice third company uh, double quicking there for a moment, trying to keep those intervals. So when they come back onto line, onto their battle line, they're all properly placed. This is one battalion, one regiment. Battalion is a term used uh, throughout the commands. Um, you don't usually hear you know, regiment a lot whenever you're hearing commands, you'll hear battalion. A battalion is two or more companies. Um, and what they're gonna be doing is hearing a lot of commands, battalion, um, you know, forward in the line, different uh, orders that are going forward. So if you don't hear the word regiment, it's actually being swapped out for the word battalion, and that's normally during the drill books that they would use.
So the kernel is called for by company's left end aligned wheel. What that means is that each company is now going to make a left half wheel towards their kernel. The idea is to bring everyone like a small door all swinging at once, each company right up into the battle line. So if they do it perfectly and they kept their intervals, they'll all snap right back into place like you're putting together a piece of Ikea furniture, which everybody knows is not the easiest thing to do. So here they go up into line. So now what will happen is they're gonna dress on the colors, which will be in the center. Strike that, they're doing a right general dress. So they're dressing to the right. So you see the guys on the left coming up towards the colors. Each company in succession will get placed. You may hear the colonel saying roughly what I was saying to them, talking about the importance of keeping their intervals or keeping their distance with each other and um, giving them a little bit of a talking to about doing better next time as they march along. Again, this is not the easiest thing to do, and especially because reenactors don't do this on a day-to-day -day basis. And most of the time, they only do large-scale drill like this in the battalion level, maybe two or three times a year. And so far, the guys are looking pretty good. So the line's dressing, that means that they're getting everybody squared up, making everyone um, get right into the proper alignment. Um, this is important for a variety of reasons, uh, from your starting point of marching, and especially from a firing position. Um, if they were firing, they wanna make sure that everyone's in a proper position to fire. Um, safety, especially among reenactors, is paramount. I haven't heard everything that Chris is saying, but man, this is super, super illuminating to be able to see the battalion drill right on the battlefield. We're looking at the round tops, we're looking at General Meade's monument, and we see soldiers really practicing their trade here, which is cool. <clears throat> So they've done a right face. What they're doing is breaking three ranks to the rear. So they're gonna go back. Uh, each company is breaking three ranks to the rear and they're gonna go back into that column we were watching the march in a little bit earlier. Now they're calling the word front. Front brings you right up into a battle line. It's a simple, simple way of getting everyone in the line. You might have heard the command left dress. That is making sure everybody goes down to the left um, to keep everyone in alignment. Essentially, the colonel is going to call out the orders and then all the line officers, the captains and the lieutenants, they are your interpreters. They're gonna hear these long convoluted commands that'll come out and then they are going to decipher those for every one of the NCOs, the non-commissioned officers and the privates within their company. So that is uh, largely their jobs is to be that intermediary between the field officers, your majors, your lieutenant colonels and your colonels and the men in the ranks. Thank you all so much for watching. You're with the American Battlefield Trust. We see people a lot from the East Coast right now, someone from England as well, but it's not surprising we're not seeing a whole lot of Californians and Oregonians and uh, Arizonans right now. So they've, what they've done now is wheeled back into line. They're working on their intervals, working on getting that line properly squared up, and now they're dressing to the right. You can see out here our first sergeant who's acting as a corporal in our first company. Uh, everyone is gonna bring that company right up onto him. He's gonna step back in. He's known what is a covering sergeant. His job is to cover for the captain who's on the end. So whenever the captain steps out, he will have a place in line every time. Every company will have a sergeant that would do this for their captain or lieutenant who's ever in charge of that company. Uh, but you can see here, the first sergeant of first company is actually a corporal. Um, and the sergeant's jobs are very important. You can see that the sergeants are all out on the line and their job is to keep everyone aligned here. They'll align with the colors and then what will happen is they will go back to their post whenever the colonel's ready to move again. Center, 
You hear the word guide post, that sends all the sergeants and the captains back into their proper positions. So the colonel's calling for a double column. All the captains are starting to explain down the line what they're gonna do. Like I said, they're the interpreters from the colonel. Um, their job is to tell the orders of what's gonna happen in the next steps. Um, the battalion uh, drill manuals, there's a ton of them from the war. You have uh, Casey's, Hardy's, you would have uh, Gillum's, which I would jokingly call Gilligan's. Um, <laughs> and you could see some of those right here. We have bayonet exercises that you would have. You would also have your regulations that you would need for the army and then these are just a few of the just a few of the school of the soldiers views that you see here on camera and we'll get back to the battalion once they start moving here again Again, for you, those of you just joining us, this is the American Battlefield Trust. We hope you'll share this with your friends and with your family. And we're out here with the Liberty Rifles. They are here at Gettysburg on Cemetery Ridge, and they are the um, they are portraying the first Minnesota who made a charge down uh, Cemetery Ridge, not too uh, far from where we are. So now, what they're about to do is uh, form a double column. You can see the. Outer companies have faced left um, on this side of the battalion. On the other side of the battalion, the left, the left wing would face to the right. So here they come out. They're making a a left, uh, are coming out here making a left marching wheel on one end, a right marching wheel on the other. We have some guys in the columns. They're going to eventually snap into a battle line, and they're going to come up with a um, what we would call a closed column of divisions. Um, these are two companies apiece. Closed columns of divisions are a um, very compact formation used for hundreds of years in the in the. Um, French and British armies, um, even go back to Roman times, but the closed column of companies, what it's going to do, or I'm sorry, closed column of divisions, what this will enable the commander to do is to meet a threat to their front, their left, or their right. It's a much more uh, mobile marching order than you would think. He could swing the guys to the left if the enemy showed up on the left flank or to the right. So it's a very nimble formation whenever it's executed out in the field and moving around. So what they're doing is coming back up into a battle line. They marched in a column of fours. They called the, the order on this end of the line by the left flank march. What that does is snap you straight back into a battle line. Essentially, what you're doing is marching forward. They call by the left flank. That's your uh, preparatory command. And then march, that's your execution. And that will take you from a uh, marching column into a line of battle. Basically, you just make a 90 degree left or right turn if it's by the right flank or by the left flank. You don't really think about the import you, you, of, of an officer having a loud voice. <laughs> you, you know, you, you think about the, the other qualities they might need, but imagine on a battlefield where you need to be heard over the din. Yeah, we're not far from the colonel. We can hear all of his commands, but if this was... 
Um, so they're trying that again. They're doing an inward face, double column at half distance. So what they'll do is they'll break ranks here eventually to the rear. Um, so you can see the guys starting to turn here towards the color company. Now they're going to start going towards the rear. Eventually they'll make a right, um, by files right, bring them back onto uh, in front of each other. And then they will halt face to face. You might see that there. And then they will front, bring them back into a battle line. And that is how they're going to create their closed column of companies. Or also called a closed column of divisions. In this case, it's a closed column of divisions. To Gary's point, you can uh, hear the hear the colonels, you can hear the captains all communicating with each other, but in the din of battle, you would not be able to hear these guys without screaming. Sometimes it was so loud here at Gettysburg that they actually had to write notes to each other. George Sears Green does that to Rufus Dawes on Culp's Hill. When they approach one another, he actually has to write his name on a card, Green does, and hands it to him to identify himself because it was so loud out there on Culp's Hill, and he eventually helps to lead the 6th Wisconsin down onto Culp's Hill. So now they're doing an outward face. This puts them back into a marching column of fours. They'll march forward. Eventually they will do a by the right or a by the left flank, depending on what side of the colors you're on. And then that will bring them right back up into their battle line. So like I said, this is a very nimble formation. Um, you would, under battle conditions, do this very, very quickly. Um, but right now they're just doing battalion drill. So they're taking their time, making sure they get everything right. John asked if uh, this was a real regimental size. Yes, it's the real size of the 1st Minnesota. They have 260 men. They had 262 men on July 2nd, 1863. Somebody said, please thank the Liberty Rifles. We do all the time. Follow them on Facebook. Uh, they're, they're, they're a very dedicated group. All, each company in succession is coming right back up on the line. You'll notice that the first sergeant, which is a corporal over in this case, um, is facing inward towards the flag. He is what is called the... <laughs> He's uh, their post for this. Sorry, just hear it. Listen to the colonel. Um, and now they're putting guides post, everyone back in their line. Captain's going to come back to his spot. You notice the corporal step back. He's, again, that covering corporal or covering sergeant in this case. Always got to have a space for the officer. So they're going to do a closed column of divisions, and they're going to change front on first division. Um, so these are very fancy, fancy terms talking about talking about the different divisions. The, a division is two companies, so there'd be 10 companies in a regiment, and a division on the regimental level would be two companies. Uh, so when they talk about this closed column of division, what it would do is actually take it from a battle line, and then you would take two companies, and depending which way you're heading, uh, face them in one direction, uh, or stack them up behind one another like they're doing. You can do it on any division you have here. So this is first division. These will be companies one and two, we'll call them. And then companies three and four will come right in behind them. They're gonna halt. This will create a line behind them. Then the next two companies will start to arrive behind them. This is the third division. We'll call this uh, five and six companies. And then the final division's coming up online. You constantly hear dress, dress, dress. That means that what they're trying to do is keep their line in alignment. Everyone in the right direction, going in the right pace and right place. So back here, our, our division in the back kind of overshot where they were supposed to go, so now they're dressing back to make sure everything's realigned. So the, so the colonel's given some uh, 
observations. He's saying, you know, stop a few uh, paces prior to the mark where you should uh, hit. So that way you can stop, halt, and then dress right up to it so you don't overshoot your line. And the colonel's talking about those intervals that I talked about earlier, keeping those paces, uh, six paces between them, because that way they can snap right back into a battle line if they need to, or it doesn't uh, force them to start stacking up like dominoes. If nothing else, too, I hope watching this gives you an idea of how much work and how much drill is required just to do the most basic of maneuvers. Then imagine doing those under fire. Just remind you, the, with the American Battlefield Trust, and these are the Liberty Rifles out here at Gettysburg, we are uh, on Cemetery Ridge watching some of their battalion drill. These are, this is just a few pages of the battalion drill manual, which is like a big car manual. Um, the colonel can move these guys around this field very easily, um, but it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of practice. Um, he can front them to, to face towards us, face towards Culp's Hill, which is out in the distance, um, and he can do all kinds kinds of different things and right now what we're looking at is a closed column of divisions um, and they're all getting dressed up here making sure that they keep their proper pacing their proper intervals between uh, each one of these of these divisions because as they march along they need, might need to wheel to the right if the enemy shows up there wheel to the left or deploy towards their front um, so this is a very nimble column it actually can turn into a marching column if they needed to very quickly from here so what you're looking at here are the federals uh, liberty rifles and they are portraying the first minnesota who made a famous charge here on july 2nd 1863 just down cemetery ridge I'm not sure if my mic is working. I'm leaning in close to Chris. Maybe I could encourage Chris because we're on the battlefield. Maybe we could pan to the right and look toward the area where the first Minnesota will later make their charge. Yep. So we'll walk down this way here. You might see in the far distance the obelisk of the United States Regulars Monument. Um, and in the distance you might see the uh, large Taj Mahal looking uh, monument. That is the the Pennsylvania Memorial here and in that vicinity is where the first Minnesota made their charge on the afternoon of July 2nd, 1863. Winfield Scott Hancock, the second Corps commander, will um, eventually will come over to William Colville Jr., who's in charge of the first Minnesota, point towards Cadmus Wilcox's five Alabama regiments, and he is going to say, Colonel, do you see those colors? Colville will say yes, and Hancock will simply say, take them. And uh, the 200 and 62 odd men of the first Minnesota will go charging down into the uh, into the Kadori thicket and into history. So they're now starting to march around uh, in their column here and their close column of divisions. Um, basically what they did while well, we were not pointing towards them uh, was make a large wheel uh, division by division coming around here. So now the colonel's halting them. Their front now can face out towards the north, out towards Gettysburg. We're actually in behind uh, the, the rear of the column here. And as we're standing here in the rear of the column, you might notice what are called file closers. Those would be your second, third, fourth, fifth sergeants back here. You would see your lieutenants um, and other file closers, potentially your chaplain, uh, any sort of medical crew that might be back here as well. Those would be the uh, folks that would be in behind each one of the companies. So now they're gonna redeploy. They're gonna make it in a left face. Notice they snap into a column of fours. Now they're marching forward. Preparatory command is forward and the execution is march. You always have to wait for that march. Now what they're gonna do is redeploy on the first division, which are these guys who are standing here stationary. The second division is gonna halt. They are gonna front. 
They're about six paces behind the main battle line. The captain will step up to the uh, second sergeant of the division. He's going to call right dress, and that will immediately bring the guys six paces up and right over to the captain. That brings your division online. Same thing's going to happen with our next two divisions. They'll wait for second division to get online. Third division then will have their lead captain go over to the right. They will call right dress, and that will bring all the men right up onto the main battle line. So one by one, each one of these divisions come right on to a new battle line. And now we are went from facing to the south. Now our main battle line is facing out towards the east and out towards Culp's Hill. For those of you watching, this is the American Battlefield Trust. We really uh, appreciate you watching. We hope you'll share this with your friends, with your family. Click subscribe on YouTube. Um, we're in behind the Liberty Rifles here at Gettysburg watching some of their battalion drill. Later today, um, they're going to recreate the charge of the 1st Minnesota, who charged across Cemetery Ridge on the evening of July 2nd, 1863, here at Gettysburg. So you know Gary Edelman back here with me, Sarah Byerly and uh, Chris White. I'm the one who's uh, speaking, is the, the voice of God here. Um, Gary's tasked me with speaking because I've been a reenactor for more than 27 years and have had the uh, pleasure of doing everything from private all the way up to a battalion commander out at uh, reenactments. So these guys make it easier, make it look easier than it really is. And it takes a lot of time and practice. Every one of these reenactors are volunteers. They paid for their uniforms. They paid for their armaments. Um, so whenever you do see a reenactor, there's a lot of love, time, care, and treasure put into each one of their kits. And let me add that this particular group is very generous to the cause of battlefield preservation. They have donated more than $11,000 to the American Battlefield Trust. Sometimes they encamp on our land, as they will be doing uh, for Antietam 160. Uh, the ranks, are, the group is already closed because they've got more than 400 people signed up to do a Confederate unit. The Liberty Rifles do, Yank and Reb as well. And they're going to be doing uh, some of the Texans at Antietam and an artillery battery. And there will be a public uh, component to that. So we hope you'll check that out if you're at Antietam 160. So they're going to run through this uh, closed column of divisions one more time. And I think what we're going to do is let these guys finish off their drill. They'll be out here for a little while longer um, and uh, see if Gary has any closing thoughts or closing remarks about what we have out here. Um, and I want to thank everybody on behalf of the trust for watching. Yes, and the only thing I want to add is I hope that a video like this is giving you a glimpse of what a small part of one battlefield might have looked like at the time. I hope you can see the camp beyond the soldiers. Ignore the cars that you could see in the distance, but check out the camp. Look at the soldiers, and I hope you're getting little glimpses. To me, history is all about that. You know, for just one moment, if you can say, aha, now I get it. That's what it was like. Then we'll have done, and the Liberty Rifles will have done their job. So thanks to Chris for all the excellent commentary. Thanks to the Liberty Rifles and the Gettysburg National Military Park for hosting them today. Thanks to Sarah helping us with the comments. And thank you all for watching and supporting battlefield preservation and education.